Typhoon. Today I'm going to go over every aspect of this bike. When you're looking for your next electric bike, you don't want to go cheap. This bike will outperform any off-road electric bike on the market today. This battery is an 86 volt, 28 amp hour battery with over 2,400 watt hours of usable power. On average, I get about 25 miles going really hard on the system. So that's plenty of range for all of your off-road needs. Let's take a walk around. This is the screen display, a cycle analyst version 2.4. This is your voltage currently. It'll charge up to 96.6 volts and go all the way down to 69 volts. Here is your watt output. As you ride, this number will go up all the way to 8,000 watts. This is the mileage that I currently have in amp hours. So I've gone two and a half miles and used 1.8 amp hours to do so. Miles per hour currently, of course, is zero. You can use these to navigate between screens, but this is your main screen display. Regen, amp hours of regen, amp minimum, amp max. Voltage minimum has been 74 volts, and that's on a very short burst on a strong acceleration. Although you'd have to be very comfortable with your passenger, the seat is big enough for two people. This hub motor is usually designed to go in the rear wheel, but instead we put it in the center and gave it a two to one reduction. So normally this wheel would be able to accelerate a bike going about 60 miles an hour. We toned it down to around 40, and with that you get the extra torque to climb. This is the powerful 8,000 watt hub motor. Because it's mounted in the middle, you're able to have a two to one reduction. Following the chains, you can see how the power is delivered to the rear wheel. Crystalite makes these motors exclusively for high power cycles. This motor is vented for passive air cooling. I've never experienced any issues with dirt getting in there. Although you do need to lube the motor up every so often. After breaking several chains, I ended up with the 420 DID dirt bike chain. This battery is designed to last around three to five years and a thousand to three thousand cycles depending on your charging habits. This box here lowers the voltage to an acceptable range for the front and rear headlights to go off the main battery. For the time being I have this headlight with this mesh red cover for my tail light. HPC Shadowcaster 4000 lumen headlight. Just for reference, this is the Shadowcaster outside. Even with a bike this heavy and this powerful, I found the Kenda tire to last me several months with everyday riding. I installed a GPS tracking system. Due to the silence of this bike, I installed this bell so people know I'm coming. Cruise control is absolutely necessary when you use a bike for on-road, everyday transportation. I press this and it'll reverse the motor's current, charging the battery ever so slightly. After wearing my last set of grips out, I found ODI to give me the best option. This square taper crank arm is the next thing I'm going to upgrade for High Power Cycle's new ISIS bottom bracket. The battery, motor, and every aspect of this bike hook up to the controller, so it's very important you have a system that will handle itself. This controller is able to handle over 8,000 watts with a 90 amp max. When you're looking at cheap electric bikes, the controller is usually the first thing to go. Very easy to overheat and if not plugged in properly, can fry your system just like that. This controller is able to handle more power than my system is. So at this point, I am waiting for a new battery so I can run the full power of this system. 
When you have a system this powerful, you need great stopping power. That's why I went with the Magura MT7s. Although you can go bigger, this 203 millimeter disc was plenty of stopping power. I have extra wide spank handlebars to go with the DVO front and rear. When you're looking at suspension, you want the very best. Something that can handle anything this beast can throw at it. I went with DVO front and rear because the company stood behind their product. After wearing out my first bumper, DVO decided a 600 pound spring was more than enough for my rider weight, riding style, and the bike itself. Thank you DVO for standing behind their product even with such a crazy design. This is last year's model DVO fork with a 26 inch by 2.75. 1.75 rear hybrid tire.